ever worked on an IoT project, most likely you've seen one of these SPCs or single board computers. Compared to traditional servers or computers, these are pretty cheap and they don't have any moving parts and they're really looking great for using in an industrial environment. But the problem with them is they are not meant to be used in the industrial environments. Take Raspberry Pi as an example. The idea behind designing Raspberry Pi was having a very cheap uh, computer for those who need uh, cheaper uh, equipment for education purposes. But eventually they've got popularity and uh, we've seen a lot of them in the industrial environment these days. But as you already might know, using these uh, cheap electronics in the industrial environment is not a good idea because there has been several examples that using these cobords in the industrial environment caused a lot of damages and had a lot of bad consequences. So the question is why should I use it as an alternative when I need a gateway between my OT and IT environment to transfer some data and maybe do some local processing such as uh, local analytics and a lot of other things, you name it. Well, the clear answer is, of course, you can use traditional or more expensive options such as a local server or an industrial PC. But in some cases, you need a cheaper option and maybe a smaller version of an IPC, which you can include them in, in your machine so they can be shipped with your machine and you can save a lot of space. The good news is there are some uh, industrial version of these SPCs and Siemens has a few options which in this video I'm going to show you how they look and what are the specs and how you can use them. At the end of this video I'm going to show you a use case for this board which uh, we will connect to a PLC and we will run a Python code to show the PLC data on a dashboard which can be accessed uh, throughout the plant or throughout the network using a smartphone, uh, tablets or any other PC or laptops. So without further ado, let's jump into the details and see what are the options and how you can use them. When you need a low-cost uh, SPC or single board computer for any purpose such as uh, using it as a gateway between your OT and IT system or maybe running your own code to do some advanced analytics locally, Siemens has uh, several options for you. But there are two main products that they worth having a look at. The first option, which is a little bit older, is an IoT 2040 board and that's how it looks like. As you see, it looks kind of like a PLC with some uh, Ethernet interfaces and some serial ports and of course a power supply connector and overall it looks very professional and slick. This device is Arduino Shield compatible that means you can use some Arduino shields for for example adding some inputs and output to this device and directly interact with them throughout your program. So let's look at the data sheet and technical specs to see what are the features. So as you can see, you can power up this device by a DC voltage from 9V to 36V. The degree of protection for this device is IP20. That means it has to be well protected inside the panel. And as you can see on the data sheet, Siemens IoT 2040 board is using an Intel Quark X1020 uh, CPU, which is a 400 megahertz CPU. And also it has a one gigabyte of RAM. The device has a micro SD card slot for uh, storing the image and maybe the user data and for different applications. As I mentioned, this device supports the Arduino expansion modules and also it has one mini PCIe uh, interface or connector for connecting to different modules such as an SSD card or maybe a communication module for cellular communications. The device comes with an USB 2 connector and it is also equipped with an RS-232, RS-422 and RS-485 connector for serial communication. The next option which is more powerful and it's a newer version of the SPC offered by Siemens is an IoT 2050. As you can see this device is equipped with uh, two USB ports to separate LANs and then you can assign them 
totally different IP address in different subnet and also it has a serial port which can be used for RS-232 and power supply for sure and on the side you have the slot for micro SD cards and also for the SIM card for cellular communications. Similar to IoT 2040, IoT 2050 looks very professional and sleek. As you see, it's uh, almost half of the cover is a heatsink, which helps to cool down the, the processor as it works. And you can use Arduino expansion boards and also PCIe or M.2 devices or modules can be used in this device. Okay, let's jump into the data sheet and the technical specs to see what are the processor, RAMs and so on. As you can see from the data sheet, IoT 2050 comes in three different versions. The first one, which is more basic, comes with a dual core ARM Cortex-A53, which is a 1100 MHz CPU and it is a 64-bit processor. This version comes in one model, which is one gigabyte of RAM and also it doesn't come with any EMMC memory, doesn't have any uh, real-time clock, and as you can see, it doesn't have any M.2 interface, but it does come with a PCIe interface. So the next two models are more advanced, which come in a quad-core processor, and the processor is an ARM uh, Cortex-A53, which is a 1100 MHz uh, processor. Both versions have 2 GB of RAM and 16 GB of eMMC on board. So the main difference between these two advanced versions is the type of the interface. One of them comes with the PCIe interface, while the other one comes with the M.2 interface. You may already know the difference between these two types of connection, and they are mainly used for connecting maybe the SSD hard drive to your board, or maybe some communication boards such as uh, LTE or SIM card for cellular communication. If you already have one of these devices, surely you know that you can find the part number on the side and there is another notation called FS or functional state which can be one, two, three or four and it shows uh, which, which firmware version you, your device is running. So that's about the hardware. For sure you can find more information as you need from the data sheet. I put the link to those data information somewhere below. And now let's jump into the software part. and Let's see where you can download the image for the device and let's run the program that I mentioned which has been written in Python to create a local dashboard to visualize some PLC data. the main download page for IoT 2040 and 2050. In this page you can find the latest firmware and also the OS or operating system image which has to be copied in the micro SD card or maybe the external USB drive. So make sure you download the right file based on your hardware. After you download the OS image from the website you need a software such as Win32 Disk Imager to burn that image file into a SD card or maybe external USB and after inserting that micro SD card or USB drive into your device, the device will boot from that storage media and then you will have access to the Linux terminal. If your device is an old version and you need to upgrade your firmware, there is a very good document for that and it shows you how you can upgrade the firmware of your device. Also, there is a very informative document that shows you what are the first steps to set up your device, to prepare your OS image and everything else that you need. In this video, we are focusing only on IoT 2050 but the process is almost the same for IoT 2040. After preparing the storage media such as the micro SD card or the USB drive uh, which contains the OS, you need to connect to this device over Ethernet or maybe the serial port. You need a special TTL cable to connect over the serial and this is not really mandatory because 90% of the time you can connect to it over the Ethernet. The serial communication or connection is useful when there is something wrong with the Ethernet port or you want to change the boot sequence and those type of things. Very important thing to note, the default IP address for P1 is 192.168.200.1. So let's power up the device and connect to the device through the SSH. 
Once your IoT2050 and your laptop or engineering station are connected together over the network, maybe through your wireless router or just directly over the cable, you can use different softwares to have a SSH session to your device. Here I'm using a software called uh, Mobile Extern, but you can use other software such as Putty. So I've already created that SSH session. I'm just double clicking on that and it will ask me the username and the password. One thing to note is after making the first SSH connection to your device, it will ask you to change the default password, but the user can remain the same or you can create your own user. So here we go. Right now I have access to the SSH terminal of my IoT 2050 and I can do whatever I want. The first thing I'm going to do is installing Python and different packages. And in this example, I'm just going to use a plotly dash open source library to create a simple dashboard and connect to my PLC, the overall PC UA. So I've already created the Python program, but we just need to navigate to that location and run the Python code. And let's just activate our Python virtual environment. And then we need to navigate to the location that my program is stored. And finally, let's run my Python code, which is a simple web dashboard created by libraries such as Plotly Dash or OPC UA. Okay, now my server is running on this IP address. This is the IP address that I have set up. You can use your own custom IP address based on your network design. And now let's access the dashboard by my mobile device through the network. So as I mentioned, my IoT 2050 is connected to my home router and also my cell phone is connected to the same router. So they are in the same network and they can have access to each other. So now let's enter the IP address of my IoT 2050 which my dashboard is running on and let's see the dashboard on my phone okay as you can see I have access to the dashboard on my mobile device uh, which is a very simple dashboard consists of a gauge and just some text on the top and also a slider bar on the bottom which I can change the value and I see the result on the gauge on the top because my laptop is connected to the same network I can have access to the dashboard on my laptop as well so let's just type in the IP address of my IoT 2050 under my web browser on my desktop and see how it works okay as you see I have access to the same dashboard on my laptop and this dashboard as we saw is hosted on my IoT 2050 So in this example, I use Python programming language to create this simple example, but you can use your own favorite programming language or maybe Node-RED with some graphical drag and drop, you can create your own program and dashboard to run different applications on the IoT 2050 for different applications, such as collecting some information from your OT system and sending them to another software or maybe to the cloud for some advanced analytics. Or as we saw through this example, you can create your a dashboard for data visualization, which is locally hosted on the IoT 2050. It is also worth mentioning that on top of these devices that I introduced to you today, Siemens has a wide range of products in different portfolios such as industrial age for connecting your OT system to the IT environment or maybe to the cloud and maybe we create another video about that. So to summarize, these SPCs or single board computers which are available in the market from different manufacturers are very cheap but they are not meant to be used in the industrial environment. They are great for prototyping but when it comes to the production line, you may consider using one of these industrial grade devices such as IoT 2040 or IoT 2050 offered by Siemens or maybe other brands to make sure your system is safe and reliable. I hope you found this video useful. Please let me know what you think about the SPCs or single board computers 
and if you have used any other brands and what has been your experience and for sure if you have seen or you, if you have used IoT 2040 or IoT 2050 in different projects please let me know and as always please support this channel by hitting the like and maybe leaving a comment and please don't forget to subscribe to the Block IoT channel on YouTube and follow us on LinkedIn and feel free to connect with me directly if you have any question or any use case so I can connect you to the right person for further discussions. Until the next time, have a great day or night.